Education meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's the other way. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Mr. Ross, will you please call the roll? Uh, Legrand. Yes. Baker. Yes. Slade. Here. Ross. Yes. Randalls. Yes. O'Connor. Here. Moody. Yes. Lanier. Present. President Falk. Present. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Support. All in favor? Or do we need to call the roll? Or all, all in favor? In favor. <laughs> all in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Celebrations. Madam Superintendent, what do we have here? I have uh, Mrs. Evans and Maggie, our new arts person, to come up and share. Maggie, I should probably give your full name. I'm not sure if you met all of the board members or not. I'm not. Thank you, Superintendent Neal and members of the board. Uh, I'd like to begin by, and it is my pleasure, to by introducing um, Margaret. Uh, she likes to be called Maggie. Maggie Malone, who is now heading up our Fine Arts Department for Grand Rapids Public Schools. She has been a marvelous addition to our staff, and she has already began uh, putting to, uh, in place changes and planning that will begin to be implemented for next year. Uh, Maggie will introduce our teachers and students from the school and give you some history on the award that is being presented tonight. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here and to speak with you today and to welcome up one of our amazing art teachers um, Karen Haight, and she has six phenomenal students, artists with her today. And if you could please come up. Okay. And we are going to celebrate our Grand Rapids Public Schools uh, participants in the Michigan Arts Education Association Region 9 Highlight Show. So we were fortunate enough to have six of our students and six of their pieces selected to be shown in the Region 9 exhibit which was on display at the Graham from March excuse me February 12th through March 1st and those pieces are selected from this side of the state so it's a big honor to be there and out of our six students three of those actually were selected to go on to the state level show and Karen Haight is going to tell you about the students their pieces and give us an update on their status it's exciting good evening and Thank you again for welcoming me, and of course my students who I really like. <laughs> so the um, the show that their work was in at the Graham, which is the Grand Rapids Art Museum, is the um, Michigan Art Education Association, which is the state of Michigan branch of the National Art Education Association, which is our huge arts organization. And um, they have a juried show every year, and we do the show, the show's in February. And then works are selected to be shown as they were. And then they do go on to the state um, where they are judged again, and a limited number are, are get into that show. And we have one uh, student, Justin Gallant, whose piece was selected for the top 18 pieces in the state, which is huge. Right. huge. So um, it, his piece was called the uh, is called the Art of War, and um, it'll travel for one year with the states. And Justin wrote a poem, um, and the poem is called The Art of War. And then he did a collage around the poem. And um, I was made aware of a workshop at the Meyer Gardens 
and uh, it was a poetry and art workshop, and I was able to um, get a go with ten of my students, and that that's when Justin wrote the poem, and. Um, it's a very, very special piece. He does not have his piece here, but you'll see the other students' pieces because his is traveling, but he has a little photograph of the piece that you'll be able to see. And uh, he really did a great job. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to the artists. Um, I'm going to start with our elementary students. and. Um, Jahida Coriano, she did a piece called Me When I Grow Up. Nice. Oh, beautiful. She said, will you come I'm going to go me. with her. <laughs> That's great. Uh, she did a worry doll. Oh, that's a worry doll. Guatemala, and uh, you take your worry doll and you put it under your bed at night, and then when you wake up in the morning, all your nice worries. Nice job! Are it's beautiful. <coughs> it's lovely. Nice. Oh, that's fantastic! Good job. That's really nice. Great work. Next, <laughs> coming around, we have Zachary Pranger. His piece is entitled. The Big Old House. This I love this one. It's so colorful. Where's the house? She said the big old house. Tree is a tree is a house. Oh, it's a big old house. Beautiful. Oh, it's a big old tree. Okay. Thank you. It's beautiful. And Raymond. well, I'm going to say Justin. The next <laughs> tree. The next one. We're gonna Good job, man. That's great. Good job. Oh, okay. Why don't you do that? Oh, let's kind of Which one? Do this one. This is oh, Justin. Hey, so and <laughs> okay, they're so fabulous. Next, we're going to have Justin Gallant with the Art of War. Step around and show you his piece. One of it. 18. Yay. Nice. Should we read the poem? It's very powerful. I wish. Should we you read the poem? Would they be willing to read the poem? Yeah, the poem is very powerful. It's, it's a social justice it? piece. It's Can he very, read it? It's very moving. If I had the words, I don't have the words. Here. Maybe you want to read it from there. Can read it? Oh. No. <laughs> Would you like someone else to read it for you? Would you like somebody to read it for you? Yes. <laughs> That's nice. Thank you. Mr. Legrand. Do you want to read it? Mm -hmm. Great job. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Sure. Still. Nice job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's on a backdrop of a collage and images of uh, people. From the army camp with the sleeping men to the twins of war watching each other to the camping guards on the ice <laughs> to the general with no face in one arm to the guard above us, to the paintings of past wars, to the strategy men, to the watching spy, to the crazy man from a distant world, to the man who saw the enemy, to the man looking at War Mountain, to the man who got shot, to the man on the lookout. All are one, yet all are apart. All are here, but all are fair. That is the art of war. Oh, nice. Uh, couldn't have said it as eloquently <laughs> myself. Nice. We also have Raymond Essex with the name of nurture. Of nature. Nature. Cool. Wow. I like it. Oh, very nice. Can we pass it down? We're going to also bring up Royal Murphy, Lady with Style. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. So we also get to pass, right? But everybody 
out there look. Do we see it? All right, good. I think there's a designer in him trying to break wow. free. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, this is fabulous. Mm -hmm. And our last artist for this evening is Lily Dent, and her piece is entitled African Dance story. Beauty. You better carry that. That's too big for us to pass. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. Beautiful. That's great. Thanks, Maggie. Thank you, Thank you Maggie. Maggie. Thank you, President. No, oh, Bob. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. Arrington, <clears throat> this is your spot. Yes. How are you guys today, everybody? <laughs> I have a couple things. Excuse me while I get to my notes. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Ready. Well, first off, I had a some somebody brought to my eyes the fact oh. of sports mm -hmm. next year for the uh, school of uh, school of Center of innovation. Yes, for the school of innovation, center of innovation school. Uh, somebody brought to my fact that you said you got you guys were saying that you want to keep the Creston kids together. Like I don't know, was that for like sport wise mm -hmm. or just for school wise? But I know you guys made the new boundaries for Ottawa and Union, mm -hmm. and it, a question came up was like. Uh, even though I, I go to school of the, the Center of Innovations, does that mean I can still go to Union even if I live in Ottawa's district to play sports with my other with my with my fellow Creston athletes? So, mm. can is that possible to be, be answered at the moment, or would that have to? Oh, right ahead. <laughs> I answer no. The what we said. Um, remember the students from Creston High School that select the Center of Innovation High, they will stay together as a family. Mm -hmm. um, and we will bring uh, some of the teachers as well as uh, I think two of the administrators from Creston High to Centers of Innovation High so that you can stay together as a family. You will take classes though as part of the COI. And uh, to play sports, it depends on the home address. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, I have another uh, upcoming event. I'm currently on the Mayor Duke Council, and I meet with the mayor every month, and I talk about some things. But what we have coming up is Kids Speak. Uh, it's a school-aged youth and teens are encouraged to let their voices be heard in front of legislators, community leaders, and school officials about what education means to them. Youth and teens should share a personal story or ideas that help illustrate their position. I encourage uh, anybody from any school to uh, fill out for this because it's 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 a it's a it's a good thing to do because you get to get your word out, your opinion, voice your opinion on how you feel about your education mm -hmm. and things like that. So if you have any questions, you can come to me after after the meeting and ask me. But uh, that's it. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arnton. I appreciate you bringing that event to our attention. Does he have the date of the event? Yeah, I can. I can tell everybody the date the event that it, everybody uh, piece would be uh, would be worded to the community would be Friday, April 26, 2013, from 10 a.m. to noon in the Grand Rapids City Hall in the city chambers. Thank you. All right now is our time for a public comment for board agenda items only. We have a number of cards. Uh, we really appreciate and welcome public comment. This spot in the agenda is for. Uh, public comment that uh, 
goes directly to what we will be voting on in action items and in the consent agenda. So if your comment is in regard to what we'll be voting on, uh, we welcome your comment at this time. If it's not, I would respectfully ask you to hold your comment to the end of the meeting. So um, go ahead, Raynard. Uh, first one we have is uh, Sharon Briggs, uh, followed by Louise Wilson. <coughs> uh, then we have, uh, excuse me, uh, Jack Prince and Paul Helder. Those are the four marked as agenda items. Would you like a um, minute warning or <laughs> when you're It's going to be very brief. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I am from Cherry Health and I am commenting on the policy 9240. And I first of all want to thank you for this discussion regarding this as a district who is pursuing excellence and innovation and a Grand Rapids resident myself and a former Grand Rapids public school student, I think it's important that you move forward in the school policies as well. And so should you decide to pass this on the agenda, what we are going to do is take a ad out we already have that will congratulate Grand Rapids Public Schools along with the other school districts in Kent and Montcalm County that have achieved the status of three or four in um, comprehensive 24-7 smoke-free school mm -hmm. policy. So thank you. Thank you. He's got two timers, it's frightening. <laughs> <laughs> This is, I'm Louise Wilson. I wish to correct, to address an error that is in the minutes from the last board meeting. These minutes are in your consent agenda. I attached the con consent agenda to my card so that you can see what I'm talking about. At the last meeting, I addressed the board about an item in, on the consent agenda, specifically the superintendent's evaluation. The board at the time seemed to be unable to find the reference on their computers. So I have printed them off and I will submit them to the secretary here. Unfortunately, the minutes from the last meeting reflect the notion that I made up this information as opposed to reading it on the district website. I wonder whether this communication disconnect is part of the problem with the district. <coughs> when I read comment on the consent agenda, I presume it means the list and all the items contained therein. Apparently the board does not. Maybe this is a language issue. Maybe the board doesn't get what is on the, what, what is on their, uh, which, what is on the consent agenda for public use. Maybe the board doesn't have time to read the written material they're consenting to. I know you don't get paid much. There was intimation in the media that teachers had invented what they presented to the board. Perhaps there is such a belief that things teachers say are simply not true, and so you chose to discredit me in print. I'm a non-entity. Many of you move or want to move in political circles in Grand Rapids in the state of Michigan. Apart from my students, my neighbors, and the guys at Ace Hardware, Nobody either knows of me or cares what I have to say. For you to defame me in writing seems tremendous overkill. If you choose to ignore what teachers say, just ignore us. Continue to pretend that everything is fine if only teachers would stop complaining. I want to assure the board that we teachers are not making things up. I feel sad that I have to print off the board's own materials and circle the relevant sentences to show that I have in fact read them. I can only hope that the board can manage to read them too and can correct the record appropriately. Thank you. Mr. Prince. Going later? Okay, thank you, sir. Mr. Helder. Mr. Helder, would you like a one-minute warning? Sure. Okay. That'd be lovely. Thank you. Mr. Ross? Sure. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hey. Uh, just pulled in um, okay. for the board's edification, in case you hadn't been notified already. Uh, we reached a TA about 10 minutes ago. So uh, at this point, obviously, we're not going to go into any kind of details. My members don't know about it. We have a meeting tomorrow night. Uh, so we'll see how that goes from there. So it's good news, if nothing else. Um, yeah. Excellent. As far as uh, our, uh, sorry, I'm still 
was running up the stairs and everything like that, which you can probably imagine is funny looking. Uh, in any case, that's right. Uh, I do want to say um, the vast majority of the policies that I saw, uh, you know, uh, this morning when I had a few minutes to look, uh, looked okay. Um, I do have some concerns, however, uh, around uh, the transfer policy in terms of where people be placed. I understand what the law says. I understand the, the rights of the administration and the board. My concern is uh, when people don't feel they have a voice and it's not indicated that they will, but rather that they may, when they feel they don't have a voice in where they may be working, uh, you know, that is a little bit harder for people. I understand it can't always happen. Uh, but I would encourage you, if you do adopt this policy, to err on the side of giving people some options. All right. Uh, as far as the other policy goes, the layoff policy, um, my immediate concern is that it will probably result in lawsuit. Uh, I, I think we've got some, some issues around uh, evaluation, which I know is a huge problem, at least uh, on our perspective. Uh, a number of problems with that process to suggest that layoff will be uh, tied into an evaluation process that may or may not be uh, corrupted in some way uh, is problematic. The bigger issue though uh, from a you know fake lawyer standpoint uh, is I saw in there that uh, student or rather teacher absence may be one of the factors considered. Um, if someone gets sick or has a, a health problem, uh, a medical condition of some kind, and suddenly they find themselves laid off because their absences are higher, uh, would seem to me that would open the door for some discrimination type things to, to take place. So, you know, I don't know if that's something you need to move that back to the drawing board or what it is you're going to do. Uh, but in both cases, uh, but certainly the, the latter policy, um, you know, I, my feeling is you're opening the door to some problems, and it, it probably ought to be postponed. So uh, I think I'm probably out of time. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Jonathan, I cannot read your name, the last name. Are you here, Jonathan? Guess not. Nope, I guess not. All right, was that it? Yep. Okay. Reports, Mr. Ross, Secretary's report. Uh, just a couple things um, for this Thursday. Uh, the <coughs> Catherine Timmer Literacy Award is going to be presented to GRPS uh, at the Goy Center. Superintendent uh, Neal will be accepting this honor on behalf of the district. This is an award that's created to honor those in the community whose work to provide hope, strength, confidence and tools to help children and adults with dyslexia and other reading challenges achieve their full potential. Uh, Ms. Catherine Timmer dedicated her life to the mission of the Specialized Language Development Center, understanding that individuals with dyslexia can achieve their dreams if given the tools they need to write, read, write, and spell. Um, and at the end of the day, this award is a lasting tribute um, to her efforts. She's a former GRPS director of SLD and worked tirelessly on behalf of our district and uh, the center itself until her unexpected death in 1989. So that's uh, Thursday at the Goey Center. Unfortunately, I don't have a, a time on here. Do you know that time, Ms. Neal? I think it starts at 6.30. 6.30. And um, secondly, also on Thursday, the uh, Cesar E. Chavez Social Justice March and Community Gathering. Uh, that will begin at the Cook Library Center located at 1100 Granville Avenue. Um, the march starts at 9, and it will be followed by a community gathering at the Gospel Temple Baptist Church located at 460 Franklin Street. This is a time for unity in the community and walking arm in arm commemorating Mr. Chavez, Mr. Cesar Chavez's vision to engage all, particularly youth, to carry out his values and timeless vision for a better world. Uh, if anyone interested in ordering commemorative shirts for that, they can call Chad at 7945149 in regards to uh, Cesar Chavez social justice commemorative t-shirts. Thursday the 21st at 9 a.m. 1100 Granville Avenue. Thank you. That's it. Madam Superintendent. 
Um, nothing other than to thank uh, the people that attended the State of the Schools address Saturday. That was great. I appreciate the support. Thank you. Committee Chair updates. Uh, Ms. Slade. Yes. Uh, the policy committee, the ad hoc policy committee, has been reviewing the superintendent's evaluation policy. And at this point, uh, we, are, we are looking at a number of other districts, along with the Michigan Association of School Boards, for some insight on what kind of objectives we have. We are also going to be looking at the timeline. As many of you know, uh, when the election cycle has changed to even years, we will have uh, board elections every two years. That means that new board members coming on would come on in January 1 and have to make a decision by March and give input into a superintendent's evaluation. We think that's kind of a short timeline. So we're reviewing that information now. We have not um, come to a final decision, but we're working on that. <coughs> Mr. O'Connor. Um, not much to update about uh, finance since the uh, last time we were here. We uh, do have our next uh, finance committee meeting uh, Monday, uh, this upcoming Monday, the 25th at 8 a.m. Um, just topics of note are just a continuing monitoring of the uh, budget situation as it evolves in Lansing, um, as well as a continued monitor of our uh, warm, safe, and dry projects as uh, we move forward into the uh, next uh, implementation phase of the transformation plan. Thank you. Dr. Baker. Yes, last Tuesday the uh, Achievement Committee met um, and we, uh, in our second time, this second month discussing the teacher evaluation system um, that's, being, that's being implemented and the work that's being done on that. We heard from David Stites, uh, who's working with the district. Um, pretty exhaustive um, work is being done on how to do evaluation and we discussed kind of the complexities um, and the environment and the politics around um, this work and how to do it well. Um, I think it's important in the next, in the April 9th um, Achievement Committee meeting, we uh, are asking, um, and we asked this at the last meeting, is that uh, there is another, there is an evaluation policy that will come before the board, and we're asking that that policy be presented for the Achievement Committee's uh, discussion um, at the next, at the April 9th meeting. With that said, I, I'd like that, um, since there are a number of teachers in the room, to know that it would be, you know, we certainly would appreciate um, uh, teacher feedback um, since it's teacher evaluation that we're looking at. So again, that's April 9th at 4.15, uh, and we will um, finish up our discussion of, of the evaluation um, procedures, and then we'll also then discuss how it will be fit into policy. Last week and this coming, um, one, we'll continue a discussion on the role of testing, MEEP, and MME. We'll finish up that discussion. And that we're also uh, requesting um, to have a discussion related to um, the arrangement of special education next year. So we're going to have a, a brief report relating to that. And some questions have been raised. And Teresita Long is going to come. And uh, you're invited to <laughs> April 9th if you got your calendar handy. So you know, <laughs> I talked to your boss about it, and she's OK with it. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> So uh, April 9th, and so we'll be discussing some of the questions um, that have been raised. Um, so please um, come and, and provide uh, discussion and input um, as we proceed. And that's all I have for now. Thank you very much. We have a number of action items, Board of Ed. Are we ready to do them in order? Are we ready, Ms. Slade, for the first action item? First action item is the vote on superintendent's evaluation. Uh, we have given the our superintendent, a highly effective, excellent um, evaluation. We're pleased to announce that. And um, Teresa Neal was, was kind enough to have given us an, an excellent year with a lot of progress made for our students. And we're very pleased to, to have her. She's done wonderful work with the community. I'm pleased to see we have a TA on uh, contract. And uh, we're very pleased with her. If anyone has any comments, um, I re recommend that we do you want to make a motion? Sure. I move that we um, vote on the superintendent's evaluation. Do we have support for that motion? Support. Yes. Only wanting to approve, approve the superintendent's right. evaluation. Support. OK. Any comments, discussion? It's, uh, yeah. It's very okay. excited to, uh, in two years in a row, uh, highly effective. She's done a phenomenal job the, you know, the last time uh, was as an in, it more uh, an, an interim role. This is her first full year on the job with uh, a lot of heavy lifting uh, having been done this first year, and uh, it's just been a it's been an honor and a privilege to uh, 
to work with her side by side as a, as a, as a, a big team here. I'm really trying to move things forward for the city and the children of Grand Rapids. Mrs. Lanier. I'd like to um, thank Vice President Slay for her work on the superintendent evaluation, taking this on um, in such a short time frame um, with the help of Dr. Baker and all the work that he put into it the months before um, and bringing this to us. And um, Superintendent Neal, thank you for another um, year of great hard work and I look forward to seeing many more highly effective. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Baker. Yes. Um, I would really encourage people to see that just the breadth of categories in this evaluation tool takes into place. I think that I'm very, I feel very proud to be associated with the superintendency of um, Teresa Neal. Um, the, I mean, I really think about where we were at 14 months ago and the work that's been done. And Teresa has proven to be innovative, willing to collaborate um, with partners um, in a variety of ways. and I, I, and so, uh, and I think it's, it's pretty evident from the, what's uh, out there in the public. Uh, responsive to the community, which, was, uh, which is huge, and I think that um, although the responses aren't always what people would like, uh, we have grappled hard with Teresa, and Teresa has included the board in that grappling, which is really nice, and I think to some extent that's what the community asked for, is that we'd be a part of it. Um, and she's firm based on her experience in the district and I think that and her knowledge and the background and we trust the work that she's done. It's been a big job. Um, there's a lot of work to be done and, um, and Teresa has, has, um, has done it in, in an incredible fashion and I think with willingness of the partners. Um, so anyway, I'm very proud that, um, that she's doing her work and that the, the uh, state of the schools on Saturday um, you know, reflected some of that work. So thanks, Teresa. Yes, I would just like to say I am um, also pleased with my colleagues. I believe we had a very, as uh, Dr. Baker said, I believe we had a very rigorous and um, deep evaluative tool. I appreciate um, Ms. Lade's leadership and Dr. Baker, and um, uh, she earned it. She earned it. Great leadership. Uh, want to call the vote? <coughs> Legrand. Yes. Baker? Yes. Slade? Yes. Ross? Yes. Randalls? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Moody? Yes. Lanier? Yes. President Falk? Yes. Um, motion passes 9 0. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Neal. Second action item is a resolution for the filing of tenure charges. Do I have a motion for that resolution? So moved. Support? Support. Any discussion? Call the vote, Mr. Ross. Uh, Legrand. Yes. Baker. Yes. Slade. Yes. Ross. Yes. Randalls. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. Moody. Yes. Lanier. Yes. President Falk. Yes. Motion passes 9-0. Next on the agenda is an approval of the second reading and adoption of policy 5510, placement of teachers. Do I have a motion? So moved. Support? Support. Support. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Legrand? Yes. Baker? Yes. Slade? Yes. Ross? Yes. Randalls? Yes. O'Connor? Yes. Moody? Yes. Lanier? Yes. President Falk? Yes. Uh, motion passes 9 0. Next is the second reading and final adoption of policy 6300. Do I have a motion for that? Point one. Mm -hmm. 6300.1. So moved. Support? Support. Um, too fast for me. Um, <laughs> Ms. Lanier and Francis. Dr. Rand. Uh, Legrand. Actually, discussion. no. Discussion. Oh, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, I'd actually like to ask our um, board attorney up if she could answer some questions. Could a chair can come on up? Actually, I'd, in a perfect world, I'd like to just sit next to Reverend Moody so we could have her up here as part of the discussion <laughs> in the future. <laughs> we got an extra chair. I don't, we're not doing anything with it. <laughs> we could use Destiny it to block the aisle, I suppose. <laughs> Destiny's oh, okay. chair. Well, we can get another chair. We are chair. discussing it. We yeah. are discussing it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
if you could, uh, uh, you, you were here for the whole meeting and, and uh, heard the concerns that uh, uh, Mr. Helder brought up, correct? Yes, I was. Um, <coughs> could you speak to the to your comfort level with adopting um, the resolution as drafted, and specifically um, the the concern about absences for a teacher being used as uh, criteria for evaluation? I think what Mr. Uh, Helder was referring to was uh, some type of retaliation for taking approved leave, FMLA leave, or uh, Americans with Disability Act uh, leave. Obviously, when you implement an attendance policy, you have to exclude those things um, like that, those considerations. This is typical in a lot of uh, layoff policies that I've seen where uh, attendance is a factor but you, we would have to consider he's correct and not penalizing employees for uh, leave that they're legally entitled to take. Okay, well then my next question is, do you think it would be prudent for us to explicitly add that language to this, in which case should we uh, perhaps table this motion so that we can get that language uh, added in, or do you think it's, there's a strong enough implication that those situations would be excluded that we could uh, pass this as, as, uh, on, as, in front, as it is in front of the board right now? Well, I think the policy as is is sufficient because in, in, to do that would be unlawful, and every policy has implied in it that it will be fulfilled in a lawful manner. So I, I don't think you know we have to spell out in any detail. Okay, good. I just wanted to go over that potential issue and make sure that people in the in the audience could hear too. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Other questions? Comments? All right. Legrand. Uh, yes. Baker. Yes. Slade. Yes. Ross. Yes. Randalls. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. Moody. Yes. Lanier. Yes. President Falk. Yes. Motion passes 9-0. Lastly, we have a second reading final adoption of policy 9240, alcohol and smoke-free schools. Do I have a motion to for that adoption? So moved. No? There you go. <laughs> Support for that? Support. Discussion? Just one quick comment. I'd just mm -hmm. like to thank the ladies from Cherry Street mm -hmm. who have come out. Um, yeah. They came to the committee level. They've come to several of our board meetings in support of this policy. I'd like to thank them for their time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, LeGrand. Yes. Baker. Yes. Slade. Yes. Ross. Yes. Randalls. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. Moody. Yes. Lanier. Yes. President Falk. Yes. Motion passes 9-0. Thank you. Next is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as written? So moved. Support? Support. Support. Call the roll. Mm. Legrand. Yes. Baker. Yes. Slate. Yes. Ross. Yes. Randalls. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. <coughs> Moody. Yes. Lanier. Yes. President Falk. Yes. Pass 9-0. Thank you. No discussion items. Uh, this is our time in the agenda for public comment on non-agenda items. Madam Chair? Yeah. Question. We had a um, postponed agenda item at our last work session that I thought was going to be moved to discussion item for tonight. I can't even remember what it was. I think it was the first reading of or maybe a review of a policy. It was or something. a discussion item. Yep. Okay. No, we weren't going to we're doing that in a work session. The next work session, session not the next work not the next board meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Polly Long. Do you want to go ahead and read this? Can Andy just come right up because she's also on the agenda yeah, with us? Absolutely. Uh, so we've got Polly Wendy Winston and Polly Long. And uh, Irma Menchacha, uh, Menchata, excuse me, and Terry Gall. Please come on down. Menchaca, Menchaca. Oh, I got you. Okay. Ms. Long, would you like a one minute warning or? Sure. Okay. That would be great. I have a packet for the board. My name is Polly Long, and I am an ELA teacher at Sherwood Global Studies Academy. 
Um, and I am here, along with many of my colleagues, to express concerns about uh, a plan to place EI student programming at Sherwood. <clears throat> um, we, are, we are unique in the, in the district for a number of reasons. Longevity of staff, one of the few buildings that has teachers that have been in the building working with the same um, group of students for eight, ten years and more. Um, we have generation after generation of students who have gone through our programming, parents who have gone through, whose students are now going through, whose younger siblings are now going through. There's a small town atmosphere that is very family oriented. And then there's also the pod set up in the elementary classrooms. <clears throat> the heart of our concerns is the words small and pods. We've worked with what we have. The teachers have worked very hard to overcome the chaotic atmosphere of working in pods. These are open air pods that make student achievement difficult for even regular ed students, let alone students that are emotionally impaired. It doesn't matter whose idea it was to place an EI program at Sherwood. The problem lies wherein no options were truly considered no other options, no research was compiled, and no input was put or no input was sought from the staff, the students, or the community members. When the administrative team came to visit us on 313 after the fact, and we were asked, we asked, where's the report? The cost analysis, the study of the impact on our student achievement, and thereby the, uh, in, the potential impact on teacher evaluations, we were simply told, we looked at other options. We looked at other options. Teachers are asked every day to make data-driven decisions in our instruction. So obviously, that was a concern to us. Another concern was that every concern that we gave them, every question we posed to them, their response was, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. We'll find a way, we'll make it work. If research had been done, there would have been concrete answers to our questions and concerns. Shouldn't a decision like this have been included in the transformation plan that was board approved? The fact that these are the kind of answers that we received suggests to me that the decision was made without research, without seeking input from staff who works in the environment on a daily basis, without a cost analysis, without a cost efficiency report, without a study of potential negative impact on student achievement, EI, as well as regular ed students, which when, like I said, will impact teacher evaluations. And basically, this is a huge concern to our staff. I did do some research, and that's what's included in the packet that you have in front of you, compiling possible special education law violations, negative impact on student achievement, what EI classrooms should contain, and options that are outlined in our transformation plan, such as Sherwood being at 76% capacity with an increased enrollment area, which will put us at 100% without this program being put in place and having two other buildings on the south side at 43% capacity that are multi-million dollar buildings that the transformation plan says is being underutilized. Ms. Long? Yes. Time is up. Thank you. Ms. Winston, would you like a one-minute warning? Yes, please. Okay. My name is Wendy Winston, and I'm also a teacher at Sherwood Park, and I spoke to the board um, two weeks ago about the same issue, and I appreciate, sorry, I appreciate um, Mr. Ross coming to Sherwood. There might have been some other board members who visited, but I wasn't aware of that, but I appreciate uh, a couple of people listening to my concerns, and I emailed a few uh, board members about uh, my concerns as well. So. Um, the proposal has been clarified to um, the staff since I was last here. We had uh, administration come in and explain what the plan was, but even though the proposal was clarified, we still have questions. We're still concerned 
um, that the, the rooms will still be open, there will be walls, they will go to the ceiling, but um, you'll basically be able to walk from classroom to classroom without going through a door. And that is what our concern is. Um, we also get the impression that perhaps the proposal wasn't carefully vetted and we're just going off of what we saw. It's possible that there was some uh, research that we're unaware of, but our biggest concerns are the, uh, the classroom spaces right now are quite crowded and we're going to be working with more students in less space if this proposal goes through. That's our big concern and then also the distractions because of the open walkways and the open walls. Um, so we're wondering if perhaps there's another option that hasn't been considered. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prince? Terry Gall, Mr. Prince, uh, Ms. Minshaka, uh, so thank you. Okay. Would you like a one minute warning? Yes, I would. Go ahead. Okay. Well, good evening, Superintendent Neal and board members. I'm honored to be here before you this evening. And um, I come because I care for Grand Rapids Public Schools and for the success of our 17,000, almost 18,000 students. My name is Irma Minchaka. And I have been with Grand Rapids Public Schools since August of 1996. I was recruited from hospice of Grand Rapids and I love my job there, a very tender job. Um, I've been, my roots have gone down with Grand Rapids Public Schools and again, it's a very tender job. I just absolutely love it. Um, Superintendent Neal told us Saturday at the State of the Schools address that she has a grandson at Coit. I have two grandsons at North Park Elementary and you might have heard it said that the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Mm -hmm. And that's true. And we're honored as Grand Rapids Public School staff to be teaming with the parents, with the superintendent, with the board, with all of the educators, with the community, and with the families to educate and influence our precious offspring. Our influence reaches into the future and the ruling of the world's future. And I say teaming seasoned staff with fresh young teachers contributes to a power team experiential knowledge is priceless. And I consider myself a seasoned staff person and the experiential knowledge is priceless. I've worked because I was itinerant so school social worker at elementary schools, middle schools, high schools, at juvenile detention. And now I'm working with home community birth to age three and I've seen the whole gamut. And each season of life is precious and each parent is precious and everybody needs to team together the theme for Saturday's State of the Schools address was a brighter future starts now. And wholeheartedly I say, yes, let's make it real. Appreciate your staff because we're here because we want to be. Thank you for your time. Thank well you. <coughs> uh, Mr. Prince, Mr. Gall. I don't think Mr. Prince is going to be. You know, draw. And um, earlier, last call for Jonathan um, Nosilis, I believe it is. Oh. Okay. Do it. Thank you. Superintendent's comments. I would like to thank the board, uh, each of you, for giving me the opportunity to serve um, as a superintendent of this wonderful district. Um, and I want the public to know how hard this board works behind closed doors so that we can do right by all of you and all of the students here. It truly is my honor. Thank you. Ms. Slade. I just want to um, say how very grateful we are and how much the community has supported our decision to make uh, Mrs. Neal, our superintendent. Uh, it's been very been a great pleasure to work with her and with our fine staff, all of you. Um, I'm just very pleased that we've come to this decision and um, thank you for your service. Thank you. Dr. Randalls. I just want to clarify that we never work behind closed doors uh, in an, uh, <laughs> uh, violating sure any we do. open we argument. Argue. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's right. I'm not going in jail. <laughs> I was like, I, she said uh, that last yeah. time. That's too. right. That's and right. Uh, it's a clarification, <laughs> nothing more. Certainly it's that's right. I love completely it. on the up and up. And congratulations. It's Thank really you. been a lot of hard work. And, and I think sometimes you're underappreciated. So thank you very much. 
Congratulations on your highly effective evaluation, Superintendent Neal. Um, I'm curious to know a little bit more about Louise Wilson's comments with the minutes and the confusion with that. So obviously I'm not asking for a response now, but if we could kind of see whatever she figure turned in to see out. what the discussion figure was. Out. Um, and then I just sent a note to um, the chair of the finance department, our, our treasurer, Mr. O'Connor, regarding the conversation with, um, with the warm, safe, and dry no, Sherwood in, in particular. And so I, I'm hoping that, I know Ken is typically at the finance meetings and, and he'll be there to talk about the numbers and even possibly the floor plan. But if we could also have other members of staff to participate in that discussion because it sounds like it's a little bit larger than the physical structure. Absolutely. But the um, EI portion, sorry, Teresita, now you've right. been invited to something else. <laughs> But we are in the morning um, on, on Monday. Absolutely. If we can just have a more thorough discussion. I know that Ken did respond to an email that mm -hmm. I sent, um, and it was quite thorough. And this was days before the actual meeting that the teachers spoke of from last week. And so just trying mm -hmm. to make sure we're understanding what's going on there. Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, I certainly am also glad that we're um, through the couple things that we're through tonight. Um, one being the uh, tentative agreement and the other being our evaluation of uh, Superintendent Neal. Um, I will say that uh, my all of two and a half months on this board thus far have been uh, very enjoyable and uh, it's a, this is a really bright group of people and a very engaged group of people and um, I think the citizens of Grand Rapids are frankly lucky to have the people on this board who are spending the amount of time they are, not, not including me, I'm lazy, um, <laughs> but everybody else on the board. Um, I, I do have a, one slight concern though, and that is that I think the entire time I've been on this board, every single vote has been unanimous, and that's a little weird. Um, so I think we need to create a little more, you know, <laughs> dissent and friction. No. <laughs> It'd be nice if we could have like an 8-1 vote or something <laughs> once, you know? Somebody disagree about something? <laughs> That's it. Mr. Ross. Um, I just want to thank um, Superintendent Neal for, um, you know, all the hard work that she's definitely put in over the past, um, you know, 13, 14 months or so. Um, really just uh, appreciate your efforts and your leadership and look forward to continuing to try to be a support in whatever way possible and just uh, really wanted to speak publicly about my sincerity about appreciation for you. Um, and I guess I will take a moment, though, maybe to, try to clarify what Ms. Wilson spoke to. Um, last week, her comment card stated that she was speaking on a, an agenda item, and in her comment section, she wrote um, superintendent's evaluation. And, um, and her concern is that in our meeting, in our minutes, it reflected that that was inaccurate, that she, wasn't, that she didn't speak to the superintendent's evaluation. Um, and um, I think her concern is saying that it was an agenda item because part of our uh, ad hoc policy committee meetings um, from last meeting, we were speaking about the it's potential policy agenda. regarding the superintendent's evaluation and not the current evaluation itself. So um, I can see how maybe she had that misunderstanding and how um, maybe our minutes recorder had to um, interpret it as, as um, inaccurate. So I hope that clears it up for you, Ms. Wilson, and anyone else that cares. Thank you. Dr. Baker. <laughs> uh, again, I just want to thank uh, Teresa for being a great superintendent and thank her for, you know, uh, utilizing the board as, as, her as, as part of her team and uh, we're working together um, on stuff in appropriate ways. And, um, and also I think that it's, um, this is difficult and uh, I just, I really hope that um, people have expressed concerns over the last, you know, couple months, you know, at least have learned that we're trying to hear you. And, and respond. So, and I think that uh, that uh, Superintendent Nell has has, um, has worked hard to be responsive to to what's going on, and um, we got a lot of work to do still. But I'm really glad that we can get to to work on it. And uh, you know, David Grant can always vote against it as we move forward. So. <laughs> I tried that once on a beer tent vote. And <laughs> it haunted me for years. <laughs> Pastor Moody. I would like to say to the superintendent, thank you very much for the highly effective job that you've done. I think the evaluation was um, was well done by our um, board members. And um, I would also like to uh, ditto what David said, been on this board for 
two months. Uh, it's still a lot more to learn and do, and I'm sure that there's going to be some disagreements along the way, but I'm sure that when we get out here, we will all be in agreement. Mm -hmm. Well said. <laughs> All right. So can we, do we need to make a motion to suspend the bylaws or something? <laughs> what do you have to say, Mr. Arrington? Uh, well, I just wanted to thank the superintendent for all the things she's doing and thank the board for all the input. I know okay. you guys put a lot of input in every, everything that goes right. through. So I want to thank you, and I just want to ask you to consider, I mean, continue to consider community's input and decisions you make. So thank you. Thank you. I guess I want to say uh, negotiations are difficult, and um, I hope that this agreement gets ratified. We have so much work to do, and we need to come together. We have an excellent superintendent, excellent board, and excellent teachers in this district. So it's time to get to work and keep moving forward. Thank you, sir. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> Uh, good people. You know, I came here ten years ago and I didn't know.